Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take videos of pickleball games off of YouTube and I critique the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a men's double match at the 4.5 level, 50 plus, played at the United States Open in Naples, Florida. In a tournament like this, you are probably going to play against opponents you have never played against before. You have to figure out in short order the best strategy to use against them. So let me show you how to best figure out the best plan of action in order to win the match. Let's go. First, as mentioned, this is taking place in Naples, Florida at just an incredible facility. It is known as the pickleball capital of the world. There are 66 dedicated pickleball courts at this facility. This team is playing on court number 58. Now, a shout out to Team Hanlon Pickleball for posting this on their YouTube channel. Check it out sometimes. They do a great job of posting matches. Now, sizing up your opponents before the ball is even served this is what i pay attention to it may sound kind of crazy but i take a long hard look at the way the players are dressed first what type of shoes are they wearing are they wearing court shoes this guy is wearing a pair of uh, fila they are court shoes he has on court shoes as do these guys if someone is playing in Nike running shoes or shoes like On Clouds or Skechers, they're not serious about pickleball because they should not be playing pickleball in running shoes. Running shoes are meant to move forward and not side to side. So that's the first thing I look at. The second thing I look at is what kind of paddle are they playing with? Are they playing with a $50 paddle? a $100 paddle, a $250 paddle. That can tell you a lot because if they had not if they have not invested money in a good paddle, again, they are not serious about pickleball. Next, I look at the clothing my competition is wearing. I know again, it sounds crazy, but if you look at this guy right here, he is older than 50 and he has his cap on backwards. Usually when I see somebody in this age group with a cap on backwards, it tells me they are going to be an aggressive player. They are going to try to get the point over as quickly as possible by hitting the ball as hard as they possibly can. They're really not into dinking. Again, I don't know why that is the case, but a lot of times it is. The next thing I look at is how is a player holding their paddle? Here's a big telltale sign. Look at this player right here. He is holding his paddle with what I call a ping pong grip. His finger is extended on the paddle. Now look at his partner. His partner has a grip nothing like this. He's, his partner is using a continental grip, which I highly suggest over a ping pong grip. I'm not saying this guy is a better player than this guy is, but right off the bat, I am attacking this player right here because he is using a ping pong grip. The next thing I do is look at how the players are built. This player is six feet tall or taller. So is this player, this player, and this player are shorter than these other two players. So if I'm ever choosing to hit a lob, I am going to hit it over this player's head or this player's head. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and I will show you some things that you can do within three or four shots that can provide you with the correct strategy to win a match. Okay, so right off the bat, this is just a huge, horrible mistake. In my opinion, this is one of the worst mistakes a player can possibly make in a pickleball match. He served his first serve into the net. When you have the first serve, you can actually win the game 11 to nothing and the other team will never get a chance to serve. You might laugh, it's called a golden pickle, but I have seen it happen and I have seen it happen in a tournament. That's right. So again, this guy just forfeited 
every chance to get out to a lead by winning three or four or maybe five points before the opposing team even gets a chance to score a point. Just look at his body language. He cannot believe he did that. His hands are on his uh, hips right there. He just was not mentally focused to start this match. Now, a lot of times when you're playing in a tournament, maybe for the first time, you get a little nervous and you do something like that. Again, look at his body language. His head is down. He just cannot believe he did that. Now, there's one other thing I would like to point out. Check out this flag right here. I mean, this wind is pretty strong. Fortunately, they do have the wind barriers on the fences, which help to, uh, you know, make it not quite as strong. But I think the wind is probably going to play a factor. So whenever you're playing, always keep that in mind. So here's some strategy you should think about. The serve is going to be hit to him and he's going to hit it back to one of these players. What he needs to take notice of is how the third shot is hit. So let's see what happens. Zero, zero, one. That's a really bad ass, like, old school, like okay, look at that. This player right here hit a perfect third shot drop at the non-volley zone, forcing him back. Look where he is going to have to hit this ball. Let's see what happens. He hits it out of the court. The score is now one to nothing. So this team knows that the player in the maroon shirt can hit a third shot drop. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it to the player in the white shirt to see what he can do. Because right now, I am not going to hit that ball back to the player in maroon because he was successful at hitting a third shot drop. Here we go again. He hit it to him again. He should not have done that. He hits another perfect third shot drop. And at that point is it into the net. Now, now the score is two to nothing. They've hit it twice to the guy in the maroon shirt, and he has successfully executed a perfect third shot. So again, if I am this team right here, I am not returning the serve to him anymore. I'm going to return it to the guy in the white shirt to see what he does. All right, here it comes right here. He's got to hit his backhand. And exactly what I thought. I mentioned earlier a player with a cap on backwards is a power player. He did exactly the opposite of what the player in the maroon shirt did. He hit a third shot drive. These guys did a good job of being at the non-volley zone, just waiting for that third shot drive. There it is. He hits it back, but he just simply hit it too high. But now he knows if he returns the serve to the guy in the white shirt, a third shot drive is coming. So if I am this team in the uh, orange shirts, I'm hitting a return to the guy in the white every time, and I'm going to be at the non-volley zone waiting for that third shot drive. Okay, here it is again. There, and here comes the drive, just as I thought would happen. Now, he is not able to advance, so this gentleman here should keep the guy in the white shirt in the back of the court. Instead, he hits it to the guy in the maroon shirt. And what does he do? He does a fantastic job of resetting the ball into the kitchen and allowing the player in white to get to the non-volley zone. Just a huge mistake. That ball hits the tape and rolls back uh, into the court. Uh, as the announcer just said, uh, pretty lucky that the guys in the orange were able to not have a point scored against them. Okay, what is he going to choose to do? Here we go. Okay, guy in white. All right, he's stepping in the court to take it, which is a good idea because it would have been to the guy in Maroon's backhand. Oh, and he's trying a third shot drop. He made it, so he obviously can do both. But again, if the guy in the white is hitting a third shot drive or drop, and he's hitting a third shot drop every time, I'm still hitting it to the guy in white. Just a fantastic shot right there, right down the middle of the court where these players weren't. You can tell by his body language. He's shaking his head. The score is three to nothing. He's probably still thinking about that first serve he did not get in because uh, possibly if he would have gotten that serve in, the score would not be three to nothing. It's 4-0-2. Actually, it's 4-0. Oh, 
Okay, here we go again. He's coming up to the nine volley zone. He's going to be awaiting this third shot drive. There it is. Got, got it back, kept them back. And that ball is hit Big shot goes out almost out of the court. Sign out, zero, four, one. All right, so now it's this team's turn to try to figure out what kind of third shot this team hits. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now this player hit a perfect third shot drop. They now know that. Another very nice shot. So now, if I am this team in the far court, I am returning the ball to the guy right here on the right side of the screen. One, four, two. Here it comes, third shot, and he failed to get it over the net. So, now they know this player was successful at hitting a third shot drop, this player was not. So in the future, if I am this team, I am returning it to this player every time until he proves he can hit an effective third shot. Now we talked about the strategy of what this team should do as far as returning the ball. They should return it to the guy in the white shirt. And the guy in the red shirt, our, our maroon shirt, is going to take it and hit a third shot. Not quite as good as his other ones, but again, if I'm this team, I'm returning to the guy in the white shirt. There you have it again. I mean, this player right here in the maroon shirt is an excellent player. He just happened to miss that shot. He got the roll of the tape again. It went against him. All right, for those of you watching, what should happen here? Serve, return should be to this guy right here. Let's see if they do that again. Yes, they do. And look at that. Look at that shot right there. Right in that player's put-away zone, they will na not be able to advance. Boom, hit right at his feet. Nice get by him. That was a fantastic shot by him. And that point right there is over because the player on the right side of the court hit the ball too high. Hit it to him again. Will he be successful this time? No, he will not. Again, cannot hit a third shot drop, cannot advance to the non-volley zone. Keeping him back, and just a very easily one point. Just a fantastic job by the guys on the far court realizing the weaker player on the team. And he missed another one, but barely missed it. 4-1-2. Oh, he got it in. Nice job. There goes all the power of the guy in the uh, ball goes out of cap on backwards, hitting it as hard as he can and hitting it out of the court. Not sure why he didn't take a softer approach and reset that ball. There you go. That was a nice shot by the guy right there on the right side of the court. That was the best shot he has hit all day. But again, he did not get his third shot drop in and this team right here continues to return the ball to him here we go again misses it again fifth shot misses it seven shot misses it okay if you cannot reset the ball you cannot win pickleball by playing in the no man's land area of the court and this player was unsuccessful on his third fifth and seventh shot if you noticed this team right here did not hit the ball one time to the player in the blue cap one, four, two, Here we go again. That was a nice job. So that's one successful shot by him. Very nice. Oh, that's quite the get. Look at this. Firefight. That was some quick action right there. Nice job by both teams. Here comes the drive. He was waiting for it. Nice job. Very nice job. Being ready for that third shot drive.
Nice play. That was an excellent backhand by the guy in the black cap and orange shirt. Hitting it to him again. Almost got it. Almost got the fifth shot. Oh, he got the seventh shot. So nice got job by the guy in the black cap to not give up and continue advancing forward to the non-volley zone. He got there on his seventh shot. Look at this. Oh, what a point. That was the point of the game so far. Very nice play by both teams. And that ball was out of the court. He got it in on his third shot, but he could not get it in on the fifth. Let me show you what happened right there. Let me just show you the mistake that the guy right here that hit the third shot made. Look at this. Watch this. Perfect third shot. What does he do? He freezes right here. This is no man's land. He should be at the non-volley zone. The shot is hit at his feet because he was not at the non-volley zone. Here comes the fifth shot. Hits it right into the net. So when you hit a perfect third shot drop like this guy just did, you've got to advance to the non-volley zone. He did not. He got caught in no man's land. They hit the fifth shot to him, and he hit it into the net. If he would have been at the non-volley zone, he could have taken the fourth shot out of the air and put it away. Good job. Right down the middle of the court with a put away. Who are they going to return to? A guy in a white shirt. Oh, that was, look at this shot. I want to go back and look at this. This is not an easy shot. This ball is hit way to the far corner of the court. This guy is having to hit it stretching out with his backhand, but watch what he's able to do. He's able to somehow get that ball to drop into the kitchen to this guy's backhand. That was just a fantastic shot by the guy in the white shirt. Not too many players can hit that shot. Does it again. Oh, and just fantastic. Hit it right down the line. And something else that you might notice is the guy in the white shirt. He hits a two-handed backhand. To be honest with you, I don't see that very often when I am playing against men. Most men hit a one-handed backhand, so I'm assuming he probably has a tennis background, but just an excellent two or three shots by the guy in the white shirt. Nice deep return. Nice third shot drop. That is just fantastic defense. Wow, what a point. Great hands there Excellent the play. Wow. Great hand-eye coordination. Slide just fantastic. Up. I said earlier the guy in the white shirt would probably be an aggressive player. He's very good at hitting third shot drops as well. And he also hits a third shot drive. The guy in the maroon shirt has yet to hit a third shot drive. But this guy in the white shirt has a very good all-around game. Coming after the guy right here again. And that ball was hit into the net on the fifth shot. He's just kind of laughing about it. I think he knows it just is not their day. Nice third shot drop. He's really got it going now at the beginning of the game. He was just not successful with those third shots. And he's kind of upped his game. And that point was put away because the ball was just hit too high. Again, I really think missing that first serve really kind of got the guy in the black cap off of his game. He was just really upset about not getting that serve in. Nope, cannot hit a fifth shot in the air like that to somebody at the non-volley zone just waiting to put it away. There's the drive. Waiting for it. Good job. There's a point. Takes us to 6 2 2. The score right now is 6 2 2. Let's see if the guys at Orange can come back. That ball was hit out. 
Just an unforced error. Making the score 7-2. Again, his hands are on his hips. Body language tells a lot as to how a game is going along. Third shot drive again, and he hit it into the net. That's why I'm returning the ball every time to the guy in the white shirt because hitting a third shot drive leaves a lot of room for error, like hitting it into the net or hitting it out of the court. Of course, it can also set up a fifth shot that the team can put away, and a lot of times that is the goal of a third shot drive is to have the re uh, other team hit a poor fourth shot and enabling the uh, serving team to put the ball away on the fifth shot. Hitting it to the guy again, and he hits that ball away. Let me show you why that ball was hit out. Here comes a return, and look what happened. He hit the ball while he was moving forward. When that happens, a lot of times the ball is either hit into the net or hit out of the court simply because his feet were not set. Again, he hit the ball while he was moving forward. He should have moved up a little bit quicker. Of course, it's very hard to anticipate such a shallow return like that one was. And he was standing behind the service line. He was just not able to set his feet before he hit the ball, and he hits the ball out of the court. At this point, it's just obvious that the team on the far court is better than the team on the near court. The score right now is 8-2-1, and the team in the near court decides to take a timeout. So can they regroup and come back from an eight to two deficit? Time in. This guy right here, again, is fantastic at hitting this third shot drop exactly where you too should hit a third shot drop. It is into the corner of this court right here. Really nice hand action there. Nice dinking and hit into the body of the player in the maroon shirt. There you go. That's why you have got to hit the ball to the player who is going to sometimes hit a third shot drive. I think is that is the third or fourth unforced error he made by hitting a third shot drive. I know he hit two of them into the net and I think he hit one of them out. This guy did hit, I think, three shots that were drops into the net. But again, if I'm this team right here, I am continuing to hit the return to the guy in the white shirt. Two, eight, one. So if you notice what happened here, they returned the ball to the guy right here in the blue cap. That's the first time they have done that in a very long time. Now, I went back and I watched this match over again, and I count, counted how many returns were hit by the team in the far court. They hit 17 returns. Out of those 17 returns, 14 of them were hit to the guy in the black cap and only three were hit to the guy in the blue cap. Now, on two of those returns, the guy in the blue cap moved over and poached the ball from the guy in the black cap. So the guy in the black cap hit 12 returns and the guy in the blue cap only hit five returns. So again, just fantastic strategy by the team in the far court. And that time, he didn't even get his serve over the net. Fantastic. This guy is up to his game from the beginning of the game. That was a third shot backhand into the kitchen. Series of points here from the near side team. And look at that. You just can't do that. 
You've got to be better on your third shot. And the team on the far court knows that this guy sometimes just does not hit the ball where it needs to be. That ball is hit out. His hands are back on his hips. Again, there's a, there was a very strong wind blowing, but look now, there is no wind. So you really cannot blame that ball being hit out on the strong wind because right now, as you can see, this flag is not blowing at the beginning of the game. It was just straight out. The wind was howling. Now it's died down. Little firefight. Kind of got the chicken wing right there. Nice third shot. Drop. Just hit it too high. 10-4-2. The guy in the maroon shirt is now serving out to win the match as the score is 10 to 4. Nice job. The ball is hit out of the court and the game is over. The team in the far court wins by the score of 11 to 4. They were able to figure out the other team's greatest weakness. They took advantage of it and they won the match. The other team only scored four points. So there you have it, a great job by the winning team figuring out how to attack the opponent's weakness. It was pretty obvious to them what they needed to do to win the match. They executed it perfectly and they advanced in the tournament quite easily. So I hope you learned something from watching this video, and if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. Again, my name is Rory, and as always, see you on the courts, and thanks for watching.